Welcome back to Introduction to Machine Learning. I'm Sandeep Rungan at New York University. This is the ninth unit in this sequence. Uh, if you're seeing this in YouTube, you can get all the information for the course website and this unit in particular uh, below on the links. This unit is about neural networks. Deep neural networks are, 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 of course, all the rage in machine learning and perhaps the reason why you're taking this class. Today I'm going to start talking about neural networks but some very basic ones so that we'll be able to understand more complex deep neural networks later in subsequent units. So going through this unit, what I'm hoping to teach you here is a little bit about the mathematics of the way that we describe simple neural networks. I'm going to see, make sure that you're able to visualize the output regions and the kind of functions that neural networks can describe. I'm going to show you a little bit about the math of training them. You're also going to be able to train them in a neural network package, TensorFlow, in particular the Keras package within that, and also be able to understand a little bit about the mathematics in training them. All right, let's start with why you might be interested in neural networks by looking at a simple synthetic data example. So suppose that we had data like this. So in this case, we had data which had two features, x0 and x1. So each point is a point in this space and is a binary classification problem. So we have some green samples and some blue samples. And somehow we want to build a classifier to learn how to pick subsequent or how to classify data from this training data set. Obviously, this data set is not linearly separable. If you try to draw any line, there's no way that you can separate the green and blue samples well. So obviously, we need a better classifier, or more specifically, we need a non-linear classifier. So the basic idea of neural networks is to really map this in a way to build nonlinear regions from linear regions. So that idea you can think about in two steps. In the first step, what we do is we classify the region into a small number of linear decisions or linear regions. So for example, here I could make a classification into four um, regions like this, each one with a linear boundary. So after I've done this first step, I have four regions, whether, for example, it's on the left of this line, whether it's below or above this line, whether it's the right of the left of this line, and so on. Then, I, looking at those four binary outputs, I can make a decision of whether it's in this region or not. So, for example, here, if I uh, look at this, I can see that all the green points are to the right of this line, below this line, left of this line, and above this line. So somehow, after I've made these four initial decisions with linear classifiers, I can combine them to make my decision about this nonlinear region in the middle. This is our first neural network. So here's our data on the right. That means that each sample is some data point x0, x1, a two-dimensional input. In the first step, mathematically, I could say I'm going to make my uh, linear decisions with four logistic classifiers. So each logistic classifier is like this. It's indexed by m from 1 to 4. And I take a weighted combination of the x's with some biases and then pass it through a sigmoid. Now there's a little bit weird um, indexing here. The h is to represent hidden because these outputs are called the hidden units for reasons I'll talk about later. But just keep track of the m for now because that will index between 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what would this output look like? Well, the first one could look like this. And you can see it's a value going from 0 to 1. And it progresses along this linear region as we would expect a logistic output to look like. The next one could, next three, could, look, uh, could pick up other regions. So if we look at these three together, or four together, we see that each one tells us about something about the region that the point is in. This one tells you it's in the lower left. This one tells you it's in the lower right. This one tells you it's in the left, and so on. 
The next idea to combine these, remember that each of these are numbers from 0 to 1, I'm going to pass it through another logistic regression. So I'm going to take a weighted combination of those with some bias and then pass that through a sigmoid. Now this, after I combine these, if I pick those weights correctly and somehow I pick these correctly, I can actually delineate this region. Why is that the case? Well, if I look at this here, each one of these corresponds to one of the um, regions. This one tells you, for example, it's the lower left, lower right, left, and upper right. And then knowing those four outputs, I can get this square region in the middle. And that square region exactly corresponds to the location of the green dots. So what I've done is by making a bunch of linear decisions and then intelligently combining them, I can combine and get a more interesting non-linear shape. What I've just illustrated is a simple example of a neural network. The general neural network that we're going to look at in this unit is pretty similar. It has two parts that we saw. The first is what we call a hidden layer. And the hidden layer takes our x, it passes through a linear transformation, and the outputs of this are passed through some nonlinear function. It's called hidden because we won't actually directly see this in the output. If we wanted to draw, draw this graphically, we're taking our input here, we're passing it through a linear map, and this gives us our outputs, one output for each um, output component, and then it passes through some nonlinear function. This function is called the activation. In the next part, I take another linear combination of the outputs from here, and with some weights and biases, and then pass that through a nonlinear function, as I've written here. The first set of points are called the hidden layer. The second point, set of points, are called the output layer. Now, this idea here, this idea of this neural network, actually takes its inspiration from biology. So this is a kind of schematic diagram or a simplified um, medical drawing of a neuron, and a neuron is the basic cell for cognition in the brain. And what happens in each neuron is the following. The neuron has a number of what are called dendrites, and they take input currents or ions from other neurons. Those input uh, charges will accumulate in the cell body, which is called the soma. And when that insufficient amount of current occurs, there'll be a burst or what's called a spike of ion currents out through the output which is the axon and the synapse is the junction between the axon of one neuron and the dendrites of the other neurons so if we think about it mathematically what each neuron is doing is taking kind of a weighted sum of the input currents from other neurons and when that exceeds a certain threshold will create an output to the other neurons and that is exactly what's happening in each component or each unit of a neural network. There's a number of inputs, they get weighted and summed, and then pass through some nonlinear function, which is generally like this sigmoidal type shape. Now, there's a long history of neural networks. I mean, trying to understand the brain has been one of the problems of humankind for thousands of years. But the neural networks that are relevant, our main develops here, developments that are relevant for this unit, started at least back in the 1940s with Donald Hebb, who really tried to start to understand what's called neuroplasticity, which in the context of machine learning will be the way that these weights of these neural networks adapt to data. The 1950s, Frank Rosenblatt con uh, coined the term perceptron, which can be really considered like a one-layer neural network. It's actually really just a logistic classifier. But it couldn't really progress beyond that because there were limitations in computational power. A couple of uh, uh, main develops after that were the following. In the 1960s, they developed what's called backpropagation, which is a way to efficiently train multi-layer networks. And we're going to talk about this near the end of this unit. In the 1980s, with the growth of the computer, there was a lot of promise in uh, neural networks, but it didn't quite reach the hype at that time. It really wasn't until about maybe 15 years ago with the um, a number of further developments in uh, computation and other algorithmic techniques that I'll talk about in the next unit that led to really the explosion in deep networks 
uh, that we'll see later on. Okay, before we go on, I need to just introduce a little bit more terminology. So here's the equations for the neural simple two-layer neural network that we'll be analyzing in this unit. And here's our block diagram. Now, you've heard me use the term already, units. Units will just refer to either the components of the hidden uh, layer output, and those are called the hidden units. So in this simple diagram here, there are four such hidden units. And um, then you might also hear the term output units, which are the output components of these, uh, the final output layer. You'll also hear the term activation, and that can be used in a couple of different ways. The activation function are usually the non-linear functions that are applied after the mapping. So there's the hidden activation and the output activation. And the inputs to the non-linear function are sometimes called the pre-activations, and the outputs are called the post-activations. Now, one thing we have to do is figure out how to select this output function. The way that it's selected will depend on the problem type. So neural networks can be used for classification, but they can also be used for regression problems. And depending on what type of problem you have is the way you'll pick this output function. So this table tries to give you a kind of a simple lookup. If you're doing binary classification, which is what I was just showing you in this simple example, you'll have one output unit, and this will generally, um, that output function will generally be a sigmoid. And that output will then signify the probability that the class is 1, or 1 minus the probability that's 0. So this is very similar to what happens in logistic regression. If you're having k-class classification, you'll have k outputs, and the output will be softmax, with each output component being the probability for that class. So this is, again, the same as what happens in logistic regression. You can also use it for regression problems. Remember, regression problems are the case where the target is a real value. And you could have a single scalar L value, or you could have K values. And whatever number you have, K, you pick the output to have the same number of units as the target. And in this case, you just apply a non, um, you don't apply any mapping or an identity mapping. And in that case, the output is just the estimate for that uh, target. Now, let's take a look at how you select the hidden activation in the middle. And the hidden activation is the ma uh, nonlinear mapping, mapping the output of the first linear layer to the input of the second linear layer. Now, there are two common choices that we'll use in this class. The first is a sigmoid. That's what we just used here in our synthetic example. It right? makes kind of a decision between 0 and 1. And the other that we'll also talk about is what's called the rectified linear unit, or ReLU. And that has this, uh, it's just basically zero, up until zero, and then it just goes up like a one. So if you know electrical engineering, this is something called a rectifier in that uh, circuit terminology. All right, that wraps up what I want to say for now uh, to give you a little bit of an intro in to uh, neural networks before you go on what i'd like you just to try this very simple exercise it is in the github website and it's all you need to do is just i've given you some parameters for the hidden and output units for a scalar x and i want you to plot the output and the hidden units as a function of x once you get done with this, we'll go on to the next section where we'll start to talk about how to train neural networks.